Now, if you wish to create a file, normally that's done in applications. Like, say, to create a Word document, you open Microsoft Word, you create some text, and then you save the file, and that creates a new file. However, for certain file types, I can right-click in a blank area in the folder here, and I come down to where it says New, and then I can say create a new Microsoft Office Word document, and that'll create a new file, uh, it'll let me name it, and now I have this new empty Word document file. If I wish to create a new folder, I do basically the same thing. I click in a blank slot in the folder here, come down to New, and select Folder. Notice though, as a convenience in the bar up here, there's a button for creating a new folder, so I click that and it creates a new folder. Now, to delete files or folders, I can again simply right-click them to get a context menu and select Delete, and it asks me, do we really want to delete this folder? I click Yes. Alternatively, I can select items and then hit the Delete key, and this time I'm going to select both of these items together, and I'll do so by dragging the selection box around both the folder and the Word document, and then I hit Delete on the keyboard, and again it asks me, do you really want to delete these two items? Yes, I do, and they're gone. What about moving them to other folders, and what about copying them to other folders? Well, the best way to do that in the file browser is to simply use cut, copy, and paste. For example, say I wish to copy this hedgehog picture into the music directory on this drive. Well, I simply right-click to get the context menu, select copy, and now that file has been copied to the clipboard. And now to actually copy that file into a folder, I navigate to that folder, and then I right-click in a blank spot within that folder and select Paste. And that copies the file from the clipboard into this directory. If I wish to actually move a file rather than copy it, uh, when I open its context menu, I should select Cut rather than Copy. That again will copy your selection to the clipboard, but it will remove the items from the original location where you're cutting them from. And as usual, when you paste something from the clipboard, it still is there on the clipboard, so you can actually paste it as many times as you like. So, if you wish to move or copy something into multiple directories, you can do so simply by pasting multiple times. An archive file is a file made up of some number of files and directories. All of those files and directories are taken together and bundled into just this one big file. The reason you may wish to archive many files and folders together into one file is that this sometimes makes it easier to transfer. Like say if you want to send a bunch of things to another person, it's probably best to put them together in an archive and send it to them as just a single file. A compressed archive file, as the name implies, is an archive file where the data has been compressed. The idea of compression is that there are certain techniques which can be applied to data to produce a compressed copy of that data, that is, some amount of data which is actually smaller, but then can be decompressed to get back the original data. So if we're going to be storing or transferring archives, it makes sense that we compress them so that they take up less space and take less time to transfer. The most common format for compressed archives is called zip, and zip files end in the extension .zip, .zip. The Windows file browser actually has built-in support for these zip files, so if you double-click on a zip file, it will open up and you can browse it just as if that zip file were like a folder, which in a sense it sort of is. It's something which contains some number of files and directories. The trouble, however, is that other programs can't necessarily browse a zip file as if it were just like a folder. And so, when you wish to work with the files and folders inside a zip file, you'll want to extract them from the archive. And you can do this simply by navigating into the zip folder and then copying those files and pasting them to the desired destination folder. So effectively, you extract files and folders from an archive by copying them from that archive just as if it were a regular folder. Another special kind of file is what's called a shortcut. A shortcut is simply a file which points to some other file. The shortcut itself doesn't really have any data. All that gets stored in the shortcut is the file path pointing to the other file. Shortcut files are denoted by this little arrow placed in a corner of the icon. So here, as denoted by the arrow in the bottom left, this is actually a shortcut file. And it's not the file businessreceipts.xlsx, it's actually just a pointer to that file. Now, say if we were to delete this shortcut, 
or we were to copy the shortcut, we would only be affecting the shortcut itself, not the actual file to which it points. But if we open a shortcut, the file which actually gets opened is the file to which the shortcut points. So the idea of shortcuts is there may be some file or folder which we open frequently, but that file or folder is located deep in the hierarchy of folders, and so it's inconvenient to open that folder all the time. So to make it more convenient to get at, we can create a shortcut to that file or folder and place it in some place which is easy to get at, like say the desktop. So for example, I can create a shortcut to the business receipts file here by right clicking the file and selecting create shortcut. That places a shortcut in this very same directory, so I'm going to cut it and then paste it on the desktop. And now conveniently, I have an icon on my desktop which I can click to open that file. Shortcut files are fairly simple, but there is one subtlety to keep in mind. If you change the name of a file or folder being pointed to, or if you move that file or folder, then any shortcuts that pointed to them are now broken, because the shortcut only knows how to find the file or folder it points to by virtue of this path. If the path to the file or folder changes, then any shortcuts to that file or folder break.